What does cash conversion cycle mean and how is it calculated? In this video, I will try to explain cash conversion cycle in a simple and easy to understand manner. We will get into the calculations soon, but first, in simple words, cash conversion cycle is a measure of the number of days it takes a business between paying cash for its inventory to collecting cash from its customers. So if your business buys inventory and pays for it today and sells and collects cash tomorrow, it means the cash conversion cycle of the business is one day. If it buys today and collects cash from customers in 10 days, the cash conversion cycle is 10 days. If your business collects cash from customers first and pays for the products later, then it has a negative cash conversion cycle. For example, if it collects cash from customers today and will pay for the product in three days from now, then the cash conversion cycle is negative three. So is negative cash conversion cycle good? Yes, it's great. Because in this example of negative three days, the business will have cash for three days that the business did not even need to generate from its own pockets to pay for its vendors. So the business is funded by customers. Now this assumes the business is making profit on sales. If the business is making loss on sales, ultimately the cost will catch up and this will require the business to fund its sales. But such a business should not continue anyway. The three components of cash conversion cycle. Now before we look at the calculation and formula for cash conversion cycle, we need to think about the example of a real business in real life. In real life, a business may have more than one product that it sells, and it may also have more than one vendor and customer. Additionally, most businesses have credit arrangements with the vendors as well as customers. This means when the business buys from the vendor, it does not have to pay immediately and has a certain number of days from the invoice date known as credit period, after which the business can pay without any additional charges or penalties. For a given business, how many days is that? This is calculated as something called days of payables outstanding. More on the calculation of days of payables outstanding later. Additionally, once purchased, the business may not be able to sell immediately. There may be a certain number of days for which the business needs to hold the inventory of products before it can find and sell to a customer. Think of a business that sells leather bags, for example. The business needs to buy and keep inventory in stock for some days, known as inventory holding period or days of inventory outstanding. When a customer order is received, only then the business can make a sale and ship the product. Now, the customer also expects certain number of days as credit period from the business, before which they are not required to pay to the business. This is calculated as the days of sales outstanding. So there are three components that impact the number of days it takes a business to complete a cash conversion cycle. Number one, the days of sales outstanding. Number two, days of inventory outstanding. And number three, days of payables outstanding. Now comes the formula or calculation. Cash conversion cycle in days is equal to days of sales outstanding or DSO plus days of inventory outstanding or DIO minus days of payables outstanding or DPO. Now, how do we calculate each one of them for a business? It would be hard to keep a track of these days because a business may have multiple products, multiple vendors and multiple customers. And these numbers would change every day. So smart people have come up with formulas to calculate each one of them. Days sales outstanding can be calculated as average accounts receivable divided by sales per day, or in other words, average sales per day. This can also be calculated as average accounts receivable divided by annual revenue divided by 365, where average accounts receivable reflect the amount of money receivable from customers. Accounts receivable balance is a balance sheet item and shows the amount receivable at a given point in time. We use average accounts receivable to remove the noise from seasonal fluctuations. Annual revenue is a PNL item and reflects revenue for the whole year or 365 days, or in other words, a period of time, not a point in time. We divide it by 365 to arrive at average revenue per day. So the average AR divided by average revenue per day gives us the number of days sales outstanding on average. This is basically showing you how many days worth of sales is usually unpaid at a given point in time. Days of inventory outstanding are calculated in a similar fashion, but the formula is slightly different in that now you have average inventory divided by cost of goods sold per day. Why cost of goods sold per day and not sales per day? Simply because the inventory value, unlike accounts receivable value, is made up of cost of goods sold and does not include the profit margin that is included in the accounts receivable amounts or the selling price. So we are comparing like versus like in the numerator and the denominator. 
combined, both DSO and DIO are also referred to as operating cycle. Operating cycle is equal to DSO in days plus DIO. In layman's terms, they reflect the number of days a business's cash is tied up in inventory and receivables, and therefore, they can be considered as bad guys. The lesser the number of DSO and DIO, the better. And the higher the number, the worse it is in terms of cash flow for the business. On the other hand, DPO or days of payable outstanding is a good guy. This is the time the vendor has given a business to pay for the purchases. The higher this number is, the more time the business has before beloved cash leaves the business. DPO is calculated as average accounts payable balance divided by cost of goods sold per day. Again, why cost of goods sold per day? Again, numerator versus denominator, like versus like. So cash conversion cycle is the difference between the time it takes to pay for buying the inventory and the time it takes to collect money after holding and selling the inventory. This is why the formula DSO plus DIO, which are the days to hold inventory and collect cash from sales, minus DPO, the days available to a business before it must pay. A simple example, if a business holds inventory on average for 10 days before it's sold, then after the sales, the customers on average take 30 days to pay. The customer's operating cycle is DSO plus DIO, which is 30 plus 10 equaling 40 days. If the company takes another 20 days to pay for the inventory to its vendor, then the cash conversion cycle is 20 days, which is 40 minus 20. Or in other words, the business has to fund its working capital for 20 days on average. This could help the manager of finance determine how much cash is required to fund the working capital, if they know the average value of working capital per day. Note that this amount changes frequently and also changes in line with increase or decrease in business volume of the company. That's why it's important to keep track of and keep an eye on the cash conversion cycle. So in this example, if the cash conversion cycle of the business is 20 days, even if the days of sales outstanding, days of payable outstanding, and days of inventory outstanding do not change at all, but the business is growing in volume, it's selling more products, has more customers, then in that case, the daily working capital requirement has increased in terms of dollars or amounts. And this means that the business's cash requirements have increased as well. This is because although it takes the same time between paying for the inventory and collecting cash for that inventory, now the value of the inventory has increased itself. That's why increasing or growing businesses require more funding. However, growing a business is not a problem on its own. What fund managers or finance managers should be focusing on is reducing the number of days it takes to convert cash, or in other words, reducing the cash conversion cycle days. If you'd like to learn more about the working capital or cash conversion cycle, check out the link in the description below. Let me know if you found this explanation easy and helpful by leaving a comment and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more information.